Pokemon games on board. Today I'm going to talk to you about this game, Sushi Go. Sushi Go is a family filler by Phil Walker Harding, the Australian game designer behind games like Dungeon Raiders. This game was financed by crowdfunding on Indiegogo in December 2012 and was published in 2013. It's a 2 to 5 player game, best played with 4 and originally published by Game Right. This is the Spanish edition by Devil. It's a quick game, it lasts somewhere between 15 to 20 minutes, and it's good, it's beautiful, and it's cheap. Good, because it's a simple game that quickly gets you hooked. You'll want to play again and again. You'll start with the best out of 3, then out of 5, then out of 7, until you stop to satisfy someone's sushi cravings. Beautiful, you can see it yourself. The metal tin box with these bumps that give death to the drawings, the colors following the sushi theme, the mat used for making maki rolls, the kawaii style drawings that make you want to hug the food instead of eating it. Oish. The designer of the game is one of the three artists involved, Phil Walker Harding, Nan Reng Sima, and Tobias Schwagner. Cheap, because here in Spain it costs about 10 euros. Trust me, that's definitely worth seeing your friends' faces when one of these makes them lament their fate. A couple of game sessions and you'll know it's worth your money. On top of that, it's a game that although the box can get bent or scratched like what has happened to mine, it's small enough to be carried anywhere. It easily fits in a bag or backpack, it weighs very little and doesn't require a lot of table space. The game brings this plastic insert, but as usual, if you sleeve the cards, they won't fit back inside. So I got rid of the plastic and used a thick piece of paper to make this divider instead. Now I can pull on the tab to access the cards and it even gives me space to throw in a tiny Swedish pencil and a notepad to keep track of the score. The paper is made from a cereal box and is folded three times at the measurements shown. You can use paper and pencil to keep track of the score, but we've made these scoring cards for you to download as a PDF. You have the link at the description. They're based on the cards that the crowdfunding campaign originally offered, but that were not included in this edition. Each player gets two, one for the units and one for the tens. So you finish around with eight points. Take the side with the zero on the tens and use it to mark the eight on the unit card. If you have 18 points, take the side with the 10 to mark the 8. Do the same thing if you have 25, 32, 40, or 50 some points. If you need to jot down more than 60 points, you need to mess with people your size. I recommend you use a paper clip so the cards don't slide around and print them using thick paper, something at least 90 grams per square meter. The cards have the same dimensions as those in the game, so they'll easily fit in the plastic sleeves. It's absolutely necessary to get sleeves for this game. 108 and a 56 by 87 millimeters. It's necessary not because they'll get dirty or stained with soy sauce, which could happen, but because they're touched a lot and held in hands, so they end up a little nasty. In fact, the matte finish they have makes them prone to scratches, so best sleeve them. It's a game where luck plays an important factor, but it will not entirely make you win. You have to come up with a strategy quickly and readjust it or change it as you go. During the game, you have to calculate certain probabilities and know when to forgo certain moves. Three rounds are played, so you can get distracted on one, but no more. You have to stay focused. I like this game. Like I said before, it's cheap, it's easy, it's beautiful. What more do you need? On top of that, it's perfect to take almost anywhere because of its size and the space it takes on the table to play. It's true that it's not a deep game, but again, it's a filler. What do you expect? As of today, we haven't found any bugs in the rules. And all the conflictive, strange rules, we do explain them in the tutorial anyways. With less players, the strategy increases, because you can be less with the resources, so you can plan things in the long run. I like the fact that you can play it safe by going for direct point cards, or risk it to get two or more cards of the same type and get more points. I especially like being able to sabotage other players. Like when you see they're trying to pile up cards of a certain type and you take the card they need from the deck to block them. How's it played? Well, click on the box and watch our tutorial. You can also find the link to the video at the description below, where I've also left a link to a music playlist that's perfect to listen to while you play. Thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future videos. Games on board. We do the reading, you do the playing.